In this video, I'm showing you how to use the Kinect for Xbox One and a turntable to scan this lovely teddy bear. And we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So in one of my last videos, I did some scanning with the Kinect for Xbox One and some of you pointed out, Daniel, why are you using the sensor and running around the object instead of using a turntable solution that could make your life so much easier? And I would say, let's give it a try. I've printed out this self-made turntable solution. So I only had this Edelkrone Head 1, which is a motor to turn a camera normally. And I've designed this turntable. And if you want to get it and print it out yourself, you can get it. It's linked in the description down below. And this turntable can be used to scan stuff. So I've done a video about it, how to use that turntable with photogrammetry. So check out that video if you're interested. And today we're using the same turntable solution to scan using the Kinect for Xbox One. So I'm really curious how the result's gonna look like. And I've already prepared something here in the background in the studio to show you how that's gonna work out. So let's have a look at the setup first. So here you can see I've put my Kinect sensor on a tripod and I've also used two lights to light up the scene a little bit. And I've put a black cloth in the background and I've put my teddy bear here on the turntable. So we're gonna start with the first round of scanning using the software that Microsoft provides us to do it. And let's head over to the PC now and see how that's gonna turn out. So after setting up everything, so this is the, basically the default that you will get. Uh, you can see that the teddy bear is on the table and I also had to move the black uh, cloth a little bit to the back because uh, the documentation also says you wanna put the background uh, as far as possible away from the camera so it doesn't pick up that background as an object. And also what we need to do is to make this rectangle as close as possible to the object's uh, borders. So I, don't wanna, I wanna make sure that I make this rectangle as small as possible and I can check this by turning the object. Good, so then let's start the scanning process. First try, I'm just going to turn the object at a slow speed to see uh, how the point cloud is building up. And then the lower right corner, you can see the point cloud of our teddy bear building up. So I'm curious if that's gonna be a decent 3D object in the end. Okay, and we're finishing our 360 turn. Stopping. And now it's building up the point cloud, calculating the mesh, and we can uh, open up our 3D construction software to check whether this is a good result or not. I'm Look at that, it's not too bad. Uh, so we really catched a 360 view of our teddy bear. However, it seems that some areas here, um, we didn't get the surface correctly. So uh, here on the arms, we have some holes and also on the left arm, we have holes on the legs as well. So what I will try to do now is play around a little bit with the lighting. So to um, put the lights a little bit back because I think that if you lighten up your surfaces too bright, um, the sensor is also getting confused by that. So let's try that. So now I've taken back the lights by a bit and I'm curious if that changes anything for the better. So let's start scanning. Okay, let's see how the 3D model looks like. So, well, that is actually not really an improvement. Um, actually got a little bit worse. I think the arm here is, is somehow split in half, uh, which is bad. And we lost the back a little bit. So I have another idea. So why don't we just switch off the lights and use the ambient light of the room? So now after turning off the lights, you can clearly see the difference in lighting. It looks a lot more natural. So let's try that. Also going not too fast here. Yeah, one thing that bothers me a little bit still is the surface of the table seems to be distracting. 
But let's first check what this looks like. Okay, so I think um, it's a little bit better now. At least we got the back of our teddy bear in a pretty good way reconstructed. So still the arms uh, have some considerably bad holes. The only way, I mean, I can imagine that this has also to do with lighting, but um, like using the lights directly from the front wasn't that good. Uh, now I switched off the lights and just used one light from the top, which is okay, but it's probably also um, not the best. So here it is our last try using a tripod and putting the head one on top of that, putting the teddy bear on top. So we have no table anymore in the frame and hopefully we get a better result. At least we don't want to see the table surface anymore. I hope it's gonna remove some of the distractions for the sensor. Let's see. And let's run the scan. So from here it looks like the teddy bear is floating in the air, which gives me some hope for the results, but uh, let's wait. Also the point cloud seems to be much much cleaner, there is actually no surface of a table anymore and so it's only the teddy bear, which is nice. So let's see what the software makes of that. Well, it, it looks a little bit better, but especially from the back, I don't get it, why, why is the back so good and then the front side seems to be a little bit destroyed. Looks like our teddy bear has two noses. Uh, so definitely there's something going on. So some final thoughts on this. I think you've seen, you could probably make it work somehow, but it's still not the same as using the connect and walking around the object. The quality is not exactly the same. It still struggles to pick up the right positioning information. I think the key information here is that the software and the sensor were designed to pick up information from the background of something that you actually want to track and use that as the information to see where is the camera currently pointing and how far have you moved between a frame and the next frame. And so this shows also, this is a very limited solution in terms of using it on a turntable. It might work with bigger objects, so I've not tried that out. But I think if you seen my last video about photogrammetry and a turntable, that has shown you probably that this is a much more powerful solution. It can be used on any kind of size of object, just using a normal camera and even high-end cameras. It doesn't really matter. And the results are really stunning. So why bother using that Kinect sensor anymore? I think it shows that this is probably some technology uh, that has its place for certain um, applications, like scanning a room and doing that in a very fast way because the speed of scanning is really fast. But if you want to scan small things and uh, using turntables as we did today, it seems to be not the right solution. So that's my final verdict. I hope you liked it. And if you do, then please hit the like button, subscribe, share all the good things. And as usual, I wish you a happy week doing 3D printing and all the exciting stuff around it and hope to see you next time on the channel. Bye bye, see you.